Hello and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Fox Hime Zero Visual Novel Playthrough. We are on episode 3. If you missed the last two episodes, I highly recommend you go back and watch them because you probably don't know what's going on right now. But we are currently getting ready to start another day. And um, let's get right on into it. Recently, I'm so lucky it, it rains at nights. Today, I have a mission to find a butterfly based on only a few drawings and a few reports. Last night, Mori played in the house for a long time, and she went back very late. I forgot to tell Mori that I would be out today. I have to leave a note for her so she won't be afraid, so she won't be afraid of not finding me. And she finds you immediately. Nice. You're out here. Huh? What are you doing? I meet her before I even leave the house. I'm picking for some canes. I want to pick up more canes and then go to your house. Why do you want to pick up canes? To make a fish basket. I want to catch a lot of fish. God, she's so cute! You can grab fish faster with your hands, can't you? You said I should learn to use tools. You did say that, Mori retorted, blushing. Oh, oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to the mountain today. Would you like to come with me? There you go. Do you want to go out to play? Of course, I can protect you. You? Thin arms and thin legs? This forest is my territory. You tell him, Mori. You tell him. The areas I've explored before are quite different from the habitat of lichened butterflies described in this information. And the butterfly may only exist in the area I haven't been. I identify a few possible directions based on possible locations on the map. When I am doing this, Mori is very sensible and doesn't bother me. She keeps following me, but not far. Sometimes she sh swings the wicker in her hand. Sometimes she makes a noise and frightens little animals. What a naive little fox. It's time to go. Hmm, sure thing. It's already dusk, and I found nothing. I wander around the forest like a headless fly. That butterfly really... Is that butterfly really in the forest? Did the uh, fellow elder brother casually say it? It hurts me. Hey. What's up? My s singing sound attracts Mori, who was playing nearby. She comes to me. N no, nothing. I'm a little embarrassed, and I'm afraid to disturb her. I almost... I almost want to say nothing, but I remind, but I remind myself that she said this forest is her territory, right? Are you familiar with this mountain? Of course, I grew up here. Well, I have something to ask you. Nani, nani? What is it? Nani? Oh my wa, moshinaru. I'm looking for this butterfly. Have you seen it? I asked her, pointing at the drawing. I love how her eyes actually look down towards the paper and her ears and tail twitch. And she actually has like reactions to the stuff that the character is doing. Pointing at the drawings. But I, I don't hope to get some clues from her. Even if she's seen it, she may forget. Hello. Yeah. Mori says without thinking. Where? I don't think it would be a, a positive reply. So I asked her more Hello. questions. Hello. It tastes so bad, my mouth is full of powder. <laughs> you ate the butterfly? Fair enough, I mean, she is a fox. I asked you where you where you had met. You told me you ate? Wait, eat? Did you eat it? <laughs> um, what's the matter? When did you eat it? Just now? Did you eat it when we were looking for it? That's a very rare spacey. You spit it out, you spit it out! <laughs> Yawn! Stop it! Oh my god. <laughs> Spit out the damn butterfly. Um, I'll try! <laughs> no, no, no! No, Yawn, you're an idiot. Don't. Well, you didn't need it just now, did you? No, no. She shakes her head like a rattle. When did you eat it? Yesterday? The day before yesterday? I can't remember. Fox doesn't have a good sense of time. Only you don't have a sense of time. <laughs> Do you remember where you ate it? Yes! Good, take me there now. 
Jeez, so demanding! At least say please! Fuck, man, Yan is such a dick. We climb several hills, and you go to, and go to the other side of the mountain. Here we are! I look around for a while. The environment here is similar to the place on the paper, but I haven't seen any butterflies at present. Tired? Take a rest first. Well, I'll get some fruit. Okay. It may just be our sudden arrival disturbs the butterfly. If so, it will take some time to wait patiently. I'll find a place with a lot of bushes and take out a map to mark the way and the direction. Here you are. Soon, Mori had returned. Ah, thank you. I look to see what the fruit she has picked for me, and it's a raspberry again. Then I put it in my mouth, and the, f and the sweet and sour taste fills my mouth. You love that. Mm, mm, Cause it's delicious. You can put everything. You can put everything in your mouth. You aren't afraid of poison. I'm a fox. Fox is probably a rare species. Do I have to study her next time? <laughs> huh? Uh, well, we've been here for a long time, but there's no butterfly. Um, so strange. How about the scene of that day? Let's see. That day I ran out to play, and then I followed the light of a firefly to my to the neighborhood. There were a lot of flowers, and there were many butterflies on the flowers. I was a little thirsty, so I ran so, so far away. I saw a wild fruit on the ground. I would like to eat wild fruit, but the flower was beside the fruit, and the butterfly was on the flower. I didn't pay any attention to it when I caught it. And I grabbed that butterfly and put it in my mouth. <laughs> 10 out of 10 ellipses. <sighs> the mixing taste is not good at all. The tr trees. The trees that gave off a taste I don't like. It's beautiful, but I'm not going away quickly. After listening to you, there's nothing special there. What am I missing? After waiting for about an hour or two, I still got nothing. I look at the watch, and it's getting dark. The sun's about to set. If we don't return, we'll probably have a long way to go before dark. Anyway, let's go back. Um. Aw. Well, I'm going back. So quickly. Won't you change? Won't you be back after dinner? Well, I haven't appeared in front of Lord Skyfox all day. I fear that she may be at angry. Oh, we'll be, we'll be careful. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, today I should thank you. <laughs> She's so cute. I quickly eat the meal alone and go back to the house. I feel the the food is just to fill my stomach when Mori is away. It's good to have a partner. I don't think about it. Let me work. I put the environment information and plant samples on the place of that place which is similar to the habitat with the lichenid butterflies and I compare the samples with the information on the paper and I find there is no dis great discrepancy between them. That place must be the correct place. But why did I see the why did I not see the butterfly after a long time of waiting? I miss did I miss anything I didn't notice after a long time of thinking I found nothing so I have to go to bed early in the morning I go to that place with Mori again after lunch however there's no finding there are small there are small fl still flowers everywhere and there are butterflies but the butterfly I am looking for doesn't appear did you dislike the taste of the trees here well it's not intolerable thank you for your hard work She's so cute. I love how she bounces. I wish I could help you. There's water nearby. I'll get some water. Okay. As a result, we waited the whole for a whole day and we still didn't see that butterfly. It's almost dusk now. And if we don't go back, we'll walk at night for half of the way. Well, we wait at, at this moment. It doesn't matter if we wait a little longer. Maybe that butterfly will appear. And walk at night. There's no problem if Mori is here, right? Well, I'm a strong man, and now uh, I want a girl to protect me. It's a bit humiliating. Ho ho ho! I hear Mori's voice. I take my eyes out of my notebook. Then I can't move my eyes anymore. She's so cute. 
I love her headband. Yo, this is a really, really well put together photo right here that they um that they made. I love it. Ah, oh, it's so good. The sky is like a huge curtain. The color of the eight curtain goes from indigo to orange. The orange red light dies and dies the garter land on her head and she dances lightly. It's so beautiful, like a picture. Her whirling brings up the wind and the crushed grass is swept by the wind. The wind with its flowers and grasses and her fragrance touches my face and makes me hold my breath. My heart beats so fast. Am I falling in love with her? I I'm a little drunk and the branch falls to the ground. What's the matter? Nothing. That... Are you gonna... It's going to be night. Aren't you afraid? I'm afraid of... That she would find my gaff and, and I changed the topic. How can I be afraid? Also, after all, she's not human. The forest is her home. But she is so real. And... And so real. Her behavior follows my heart. And she is free to show me her, her pleasure, anger, sorrow, and joy. She's even more... More real than any human I've ever seen. Like a human. Maybe some humans don't change fireflies light and run in the middle of the forest at midnight like her. Wait a minute. Firefly light? I think I found the most important part. Fireflies light can only be seen in the evening. How did you not figure that out earlier? I was sitting here like fireflies. They only come out at night, so it's probably going to be, you know, a nighttime thing. But this dude is just... Oh, my God. He's so fucking dense. And, yeah, you're probably falling in love with her. Can you... I, I can't blame you. I mean, she's fucking awesome. Though, I mean, I feel like... So is this, like, bestiality shit going on? Or are you just... You, you realize that you're a furry now? What's the matter with you? Are you afraid? There's no danger here. Seeing that I don't respond to her, Mari walks over and asks me with concern. Oh, oh nothing. Uh, we might stay here late today. Huh? Did you find anything? That kind of butterfly, if my guess is right, it should appear at night. Really? Then I won't go back. If you won't go back, is Lord Skyfox worried about you? I'm worried about you. It's supposed to be fine, ju and it's supposed to be fine just one night. Oh, she's worried about him. Oh, you're worried about me. You don't know now that I'm here and you're not in great danger. I go. The big beasts will smell you and eat you. Really? <laughs> they don't dare come until they smell me. In the world of animals, I guess there's a rule to divide territory accordingly to the smell. They generally avoid each other unless their territorial owner is not fierce enough. You mean, you're as fierce as them? Of course! I'm a fox! <laughs> She's so cute. Looking at Mori's appearance, I could not imagine her fierce fiercity. It's night now. The landscape becomes dark and firefly light starts to shine around here. In the light of the moon, the forest looks like it's being covered in a gauze. You don't need to light a fire. You see, it's very bright here. Fire is more than just lighting. When beasts see lights, from, and they will come from far away here. There will be no wild animals. You say that, but... I told you, I'm a fox. Don't underestimate me. And it will disturb the butterfly. Mori whispered suddenly. She's, she is so careful to help me. Although her expression is a little clumsy. Well, let's eat something. I take dry cake out of my backpack and hand... And a hand hauled of the cake to Mori. Dry cake is not as good as toasted fish. I can't make toasted fish here, so you'll have to eat some dry cake today. Tomorrow you can come to my house and I'll cook toasted fish for you. Well, I don't mean that, but dry cake is a bit worse than roasted fish. I know, you're not picky. Okay, I'm done. I'll go over there. She's so cute. Well, careful not to fall down. Although Mori promises me that there are no beasts here. 
but it matters our our life. I cannot take it lightly. I find a branch and try its hard. If I only use it to drive the beast, it should work, right? Having pre prepared for danger, I turn the focus to possible signs of the butterfly, but my eyes always involuntarily look in the direction of Mori. She passes through the trees and comes through open space where the flowers are blossoming and squats down. Does she... Does she want to make garland again? Oh, look at these cute butterflies. In the shadows, Mori is covered with silver. Like a fallen angel, she's so beautiful and unreal. Some glimmers, sh glimmers shine around her, like her patron saint. How amazing is it? Is it a dream? When I am enjoying this terrific view... Hey, Jan. Mori's voice calls me back to reality. What is it? Butterflies. She speaks in her low voice. Ah, uh, butterflies? Look. I follow her sight. There's a blue light standing on her finger, flickering out and lighting up slowly. When I look carefully, I recognize the patron-like glimmer and it's just a lichen-red butterfly I was searching for this whole time. This is so pretty. I love this photo. I can see light themselves. Don't move! I put down my stick and take out a butterfly net from my backpack. Don't disturb it. Let me do it. Um, I sneak around slowly and avoid making any noise from the leaves and twigs on the ground. It's a good time to cast the net. I got it, ha! Huh? I can laugh loudly, loudly as they're searching after searching prey. It's finally not net. Ha! Huh? When, when I'm proud of what my... I did, I suddenly slip and lose my balance. Ah, uh, maybe it's because I stamped on the cor corrupted and slippery leaves. I fall down and Mori is pulled down by me. I'm sorry, I apologize and get ready to stand up. I look at Mori and suddenly I feel suffocated and stop. Her eyes, which have been shrewd and smart, are staring at me at the same time. I gotta say, his uh, outfit is pretty impressive for someone who's been living out in the woods for like nine days. I wonder how many um, pairs of clothes he has in his cabin. <sighs> God, she's so cute though. I like the leaves for, for unnecessary dramatic effect. And I like how he's so distracted by how cute she is. I mean, I can't blame him there. I can even see my shadow in her pupils. A few hayseeds littering on her hair. Her mouth slightly opens. It seems like she's still in shock. I can feel her body warmth, even though she's wearing two clothes. Two clothes. Her chest heaves rhythm rhythmically, and every time it rises and falls, it brings war warmth to me. The warmth rises up, and it blows through my ears. You're heavy. My face is like to be burned. Oh, look how cute she is. Mori blushes too. Uh, sorry. I come to my mind and try to stand up hurriedly, but I forgot the net is still on my hand. I slip down again, and my knee touches the pole. I fall down again. Ouch. My hand, my lips accidentally match on hers. The soft touch is like an electric current that flashes through my body. I look up hurriedly. Hey. She's angered and blushed. You... What did you just do? You meant to do it. You definitely meant to do it. I look at her mouth, which is complaining to me, but I recall the soft touch I had felt now in my mind. It's warm. Sweet. Don't know why. I'm moved. I lowered my head and blocking her mouth, her talking mouth. I want to relieve, re relive this feeling. Yes, that's it. It makes me obsessed. Ellipses. Ellipses. I can't help but be indulged in this soft and sweet touch. She's like a high-voltage electric door. Once touched, you will never get away. No matter she's a fox spirit or a human, I don't mind. I just indulge in this feeling. Ellipses. But finally, unable to breathe, I have to stop. I left my head and gasp, inhaling the cool air in the mountains, which is mingled with the light fragrance of her body. Damn, you just made out with her? Forcibly, too. Mary opens her eyes, blinking and gazing at me. She looks like she wants to question me. 
I'm a little embarrassed, but Mori doesn't speak anything, just looking at me in silence. I don't know how she feels about me. Are you okay? I begin to regret when I calm down. Uh, mm. Then, there's a silence again. I'm more nervous. Would the impulse destroy the relationship that we had built so hard to build? We tried so hard to build? Just, can you forget it? What? It's just, now I was impulsive. Sorry. You impulsive? It's... was not all impulsive, but it was really... What on earth are you saying? I... I'm afraid it would scare you, even break up our friendship, but... I make up my mind, decide to do something. I like you! Ellipses. I want to be with you! Ellipses. I... I'm a fox spirit, but you're human! I know. But I like you. No matter who you are, no matter how... No matter if you accepted me, I feel bitter in my heart, but it's empty when I speak out. I... It looks like Mori wants to say something, but eventually stops. I think I put her on the spot. It's okay. I'm ready for it. I... I like you too. I don't know when. It's gonna be tough without... Without you. Really? I get dizzy with sudden surprise and I shook her shoulders. It's true, don't shake me! Really? You like him? Dude's a freaking dick! I'm very tired when I come back to the cabin. I put down my backpack, lying down, and getting in, uh, getting in asleep quickly. It's nightfall when I wake up. Wait, what? I make the butterfly into specimen and write down the spe species info. I go back to sleep when I finish the mailed package. I get up early in the morning, having breakfast and making the bed. There's a knock on the door. It must be Mori. Morning. Morning. Hungry? Want some breakfast? Breakfast? What do you have? Um, only solid food. I had breakfast. Do you really hate solid food that much? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm going down the mountain. Do you want to go with me? We can buy whatever you want. Really? Can I? Of course. That's the first time I'll ever go to the place humans live. Wait. Although she's now the same as an ordinary human in my eyes, but she still has she's still an alien in the eyes of others. What? Can you take back your eels and tail? It's I Lord Skyfox said I'm not the age to learn spells. She says hesitantly. It's a little troublesome. So, can you make yourself invisible to others? Like invisibility in some stories? I told you, I can't. She did say that earlier, Jan. Come on. Is this the basic st skill in stories? Fox. Fox spirits also need to practice to be able to use spells. Okay, forget it. Do you have any other clothes? Clothes? Is there any problem? Um, people don't usually wear so formal clothes. They will stare at you if you wear this. Formal? Hmm. I might be... I, I've been wearing it since I was a child, and so is Lord Skyfox. Have you ever seen humans wear this? Humans? I've seen a few in the woods before I met you. Probably they were my fellow apprentices. They were dressed in dark gray, just like you. Yeah, people usually dressed in plain... People are usually dressed in plain... And they are only dressed up in formal, on formal occasions. Oh, but I don't have any other clothes. Hmm, let me think. Can I go today? You better not. I'm afraid you'll cause danger if someone recognizes you. It's dangerous? Although Lyle Skyfox has warned me again and again not to come into contact with human beings. I think you're very nice. But you say so. That's right. Humans make a large group. Some, of, some are kind and some are evil. There are... There are also some that there are also some that are scheming. So complicated. Why can't it be simpler? Maybe it's because too many people and much less resources want more, gain less. I don't understand. Forget it. You can read this book here today or go home. I'll be back late. Can I go with you to the foot of the mountain? No, you'll be found if there's a carriage passing by. I'll walk very fast to come back earlier. You'd be tired. 
Okay then, take care. I will. Take care of yourself and don't fall into the water. No! She's so cute. Ugh. God. <sighs> Not gonna lie, though. Just reminds me how boring this world is. Why can't there be cute fox girls in this world, too, man? Hell, I'd like to be one of them. I take a deep breath. I take a deep breath after I mailed out materials and butterfly specimen. Finally, it's done. Next is to buy some new clothes for Mori. I have to buy some daily necessities. I quicken my space as I recall Mori's disappointed eyes. Yeah, you can't stay for long. Oh, hello. How are you? Um, do you have any clothes for young girls? I'm a little awkward. I don't know how to say. Ha <laughs> ha. Seems you want to buy some clothes for your sweetheart. Yes. <laughs> I feel more awkward when the shopkeeper sees through me. Our shop is the best choice. Now the girls' clothes are all make are all made in this shop. Please tell me the sizes of your sweetheart. Sizes? Damn, I don't know. Haha, <laughs> it's a surprise. Okay, then describe her height and figure. The shop owner seems he understands me. The height? Uh, medium. Uh, a meter and six? Hmm, I'm thinking of, about Mori and smiling in my mind. What about the shape? The shop owner reminds me. Medium too. A pretty balanced figure. Bro! <laughs> Bro, although she's a beauty in your eyes, it's a matter of whether the clothes fit. Please describe clearly. Okay, uh, but she's in, she's pretty balanced. What about the chest? I blush. It's normal. Like this. The shop owner takes out two balls of string and puts them on his chest. He even ha doesn't have any embarrassment. Well, I mean, he probably does this for a living. You can't really blame him. Don't misunderstand me. It's about the size. Um, a little bit smaller. He takes out some string and asks me again. This? Yeah. He puts down the string and taking out a pen on his ear and writing it on paper. Sure enough, he's a, he's an experienced tailor. Well, yeah. He owns a shop. Well, what about the skirt? Normal or smaller? Usually, what does a girl like? Most of the time, a smaller one. Some of the girls choose normal ones because strict family education. So, make it smaller. <laughs> Let me be a little selfish. Of course he's gonna want it smaller. I mean, in case any generic anime mishaps happen, you know, you have to be there and ready. Well, please select the fabric and design. Sure. I'm searching around the shop when I'm waiting for the owner to make clothes. Mori has to hide her ears and tail. She can easily hide her ears with a hat, but what about the tail? What if she ties her tail in the skirt? Her tail is much bigger than an ordinary fox, and it's so far furrier. It's going to be a big lump in the skirt. It won't work. How do I cover it with a big cloak? Most of the time, cloaks are used for cold winter. It's too sharp to wear it in this season. Suddenly, I find a school bag on the wall. It's the type of a common student. It's simple and big enough. Cut a hole in the bottom and put her tail on it. I think it'll cover her long hair. It would be perfect. Sir, yes. How much for the hat in the school bag? It's twilight when I pant back to the cabin. Mori is not here. She must have gone home. I put the bag on the ground and sit down. It's so quiet. I can only hear my breath. I feel as though I'm not used to being alone. I'm hungry. I was in a hurry and forgot to have dinner in town. Now I'm too exhausted to cook. I feel regretful and suddenly notice there's a plate covered with a bowl on the desk. I touch it. It's still warm. Is it Mori? Did she cook for me? She learned to keep uh, keep warm with a bowl. I uncover the bowl with expectation. There's some grilled fish on the plate. It's overburned on the surface and smells a little scorched. Seems she hasn't learned how to cook fish. I've got a long way to go in teaching. I didn't expect there's someone to cook for me except my parents. Pushing aside the, d the dark part, the tender white fl flesh appears with delicious aroma. Just a little burnt, but it tastes good. It must have taken her a, lo a lot of hard work to do this. I'm moved and I feel happy. It's a shame to treat the fish with gulp. 
I begin to savor. Mmm, a little too much salt. Oh, she's so cute. I'm awakened by a knock on the door. I'm in a daze. Yan, get up! Wait, don't come in. I'm not dressed. I thought I... I thought to have a good holiday by picking up late. But I'm screwed... But I'm screwed up by Mori. Well, hurry up. Finally, I have to get up. I yawn and open the door. Oh, hi -yo. Oh, hi She's so cute. I love how she's just there in the morning. Let's go. I'm on it. She jumps in and looks like she's in a good mood. Did you have fun yesterday? Tell me about it. Oh, I didn't go for fun. Let me brush my teeth first. What's the difference? Your job is like having fun. It's quite different. I say with toothpaste foam form all over my mouth and go out and to gargle. I don't know if she heard me clearly or not. When I come into my room, I find her gazing at the new bought school bag in the corner of the wall. Wow, you found it. This is for you. For me? I said yesterday I'll think about it. You mean going down the mountain? I thought you were just saying... Why don't you believe me? Do I look unreliable? I answer, pretending to be hurt. <laughs> You're so mean! Why are you teasing her like this? It's just, I didn't expect you to take it in your heart. Of course it's in my heart. I say it directly, but she suddenly feels like somehow of, but it suddenly feels like somehow of a confession. Mori doesn't say immediately. I begin to get nervous. But, have I bared my heart? Maybe... Thank you. Uh, oh well. Th thanks for the fish. It's delicious. That's because you're a good teacher. But you don't have to cook for the teacher. I just wanted to do it for you. God, she's so cute. Oh, c c come to try. What? I picked up the backpack and take out the clothes and the hat, which are already full with daily necessities. This is a shirt. This is a skirt. This is the hat, okay? Try them. So many. Not too many. I, I go out to wait. They should fit. I touch the pocket, the hair band I bought yesterday in there. She has long hair. It'd be nice if she pulled a band around it. I hope she'll like it. Okay, come in, please. I'm coming. Oh, she's so cute! I have to say, it's a good tailor. The clothes fit well. The fabric with blue flowers is a good match for her. How about it? Is it nice? Mori says hesitantly. Yes, it's so beautiful. Now, do I look like a human? Well, there's a little difference, but it's hard to recognize. So now I can go into the human town with you now. It'll be a few days, but try this. I took a... take... Out the hair band? Uh -huh. This? To band your hair. I have to once again brag about my sight. The blue, dark blue flower accessory is a perfect match to her white cloth and blue flowers. Hey. Is it okay? It's perfect. It is so cute. Oh my god. I love it. Her cheeks flush in the morning glow of the, in the sky. This beauty. It's a shame... It's not the same as the cold beauty of the night. Now she looks like an ordinary human girl. It's fine, Mori says, lowering her head. I can sp speak nothing except very, very beautiful. What have I learned those years? And... Oh, I'm going to show Lord these to Lord Skyfox. Again, Lord Skyfox. Is this Lord Skyfox a man? Um, she said woman earlier. Lord Skyfox must be glad. Hey, I, I come back later. Hey, she runs out of my sight before I respond. The cabin, which was alive, is cold and quiet now. My heart is like to be taken away, but the warmest part, disappointment comes out from the empty part. Yan! The warm yellow comes back again, but I can't tell if it's re illusion or reality. I only hear her whispering in my ear. Thank you very much. And then runs away again. But not come back this time. What? Certainly Lord Skyfox is more important. She said that Lord Skyfox was a girl. 
We are, are we went through this. Why does it why does he feel like it's a man? Did he forget already? Come on. It's sunny today. I stretch out and plan to clean the cabin before going out. After all, it's a house. There's always a girl going in and out. It shouldn't be too messy. I open the window and set up the necessities I bought from town. Ah, uh, here's a new cup. It may not be it may not happen that Maury drank from a bowl when she first the first time I met her. I hear the sound of footsteps when I'm cleaning. Maury is pl- passing by in front of me. Good morning. I'm used to her appearance. Ah, uh, good morning. She gives me an answer, walking quickly and straight to the desk. She sits on the ground, picking up the book on the floor. What? She sounds so sad. She comes to read. Did she ask me where she? She doesn't. She always ask me where we're going to go out and have fun. What's the matter? Nothing. I like how she still has the ribbons. Or the, the hair accessories. She answers, turning the pages rudely. Obviously, she's trying to hide something. No matter what she's hiding, according to my misunderstanding of her, I could tell she's unhappy now. Hey, you have something on your face. What's that? Don't move. Let me see. What is it? Oh, three words. Words? Let me take a closer look. Three words. I'm not happy. <laughs> hey! Uh, there, there are three big words on your face. No, that's four words. Whatever, three or four. You're not happy. I mean, that, that's three words, but I assume that's like a Japanese thing. There's like four characters, maybe. Well, a man who can't count is not worthy of a letter. <laughs> the girl with words on her face is not reliable, too. Hey, I have no words on my face. <laughs> Fine, are you going out together? Going out? Although she has been called out, we didn't talk much on the way. I don't even know if she's in a better mood. After arriving at the observation location, I opened my notebook, wondering why she's not happy. It looks not... It looks not me angered her. So that should be Lord Skyfox. A southern hawker is hanging around t- to chase a mosquito and then spreads its thin wings standing slightly on the green leaf in front of me. I have to grab the opportunity and write down its look. Oh man, I can't believe she's so sad. Where is she? After recording a series of boring data, I suddenly feel empty, like I'm missing something. I hurriedly raise my head to look at Mori. She's sitting under the tree nearby, pulling the petals of a flower with her hand. She looks in a daze. Don't break the petals again. It takes time and effort to grow up. Um. Oh. Oh, she, I like how she's, like, lower on the ground. And she looks so sad. You know, seeds have to work very hard to take root and sprout. Most of the time, they need to survive They need to survive between stones. Oh. Mary doesn't seem to have interest in talking to me. So I have to shut up and concentrate on my work. Oh. When we go back to the observation station, it's twilight as usual. How about... Go. How about going back after dinner? I won't go today. What? I'll sleep here tonight. What's wrong? I don't want to go back. Well, er, so I'll make the bed. Well, based on what I've heard, I bet you Lord Skyfox is upset because she did talk about how Lord Skyfox warns her about uh, encountering humans. And she probably went back and showed her the cute clothes, and Lord Skyfox tells her not to get too attached to humans, and probably has this big old argument. So now she probably doesn't want to go back because she loves the main character. Which is cute. It's cute. And really um, awesome at the same time, if you think about it. To pick him over Lord Skyfox, who she's been... um, living with for 18 years you know it's kind of impressive i didn't expect maury would sleep here today so i have to carry out winter quilt and put it on the ground i lay on the floor where mary usually reads is the quilt okay are you cold i'm not won't lord skyfox worry no but she doesn't care about my feelings nor anyone else she lives in her own little world. I hate Lord Skyfox. Oh. I don't want to live with her anymore. 
did you have a misunderstanding? No, she's always like that. She was before and she is now. Oh, I don't know her. It's hard to say. But see, see how it, it's, it's she, god damn it. I may guess maybe she has an excuse. Anyway, you said she brings you up. There's, she brought you up. There's no reason she can't, doesn't care about you. She's not. Can you take me to meet her? I've heard, but never met. No, let's not talk about her, okay? Okay, fine. <laughs> all right so thank you all for watching this episode i hope you enjoyed it we're gonna get right on into the next episode with uh here in a couple days and uh i appreciate you guys so much click that like button down below for me i'd really do appreciate it and we'll see you next time <laughs>